Hello and welcome again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're glad you're with us. We're here every week talking to interesting people and about interesting issues. And before you know it, basketball season will be here. And we've got the guy down in Norman today making his first appearance on The Verdict. Yes, we were pleased that uh, Jeff Capel would uh, agree to come talk to us. Uh, we uh, uh, have been wanting to get him on for a while. He's been awfully busy doing a lot of good things down there. We're going to find out a little bit more about Jeff and what's going on in the program. Seems to have the program on the right track, and we'll find out more about Jeff Capel. What makes him tick today on The Verdict? In driving rain, blistering heat, and bitter cold, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, Chesapeake drills nonstop for natural gas on American soil. Chesapeake drills more new gas wells than anyone else, and from those wells collects the most drilling information and acquires more 3D seismic images, leveraging every efficiency to improve the odds of finding more natural gas every day with every well we drill. The better job we do of discovering bigger reserves of clean burning American natural gas, the greater the prosperity of our nearby communities, our state, and our nation. And as long as there are more gas reserves to be found here in the U.S., we will never rest. Chesapeake. Natural gas wins the day. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Really pleased today to have the head coach of the University of Oklahoma men's basketball program, Jeff Capel, joining us for his first visit, and we sure hope not his last visit <laughs> to The Verdict. Uh, Jeff uh, uh, has been at the University of Oklahoma now starting his third season. He did his undergraduate work at Duke University. There he was a basketball player and uh, started four years for uh, the Blue Devils. Uh, very successful uh, tenure there. Uh, he was uh, previously head coach at Virginia Commonwealth before coming to uh, the University of Oklahoma. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. We're My pleased, pleasure. Pleased My to pleasure. have you. Thanks. Seems like you've got the program on the right track. Are you <laughs> pleased where you are? Is this kind of where you thought the program would be going into its third year? Well, I am very pleased. I, I thought last year was a huge step for us getting to the NCAA tournament as an at-large team, winning the game, so getting to the final 32. Thought it was a great experience. We have a good amount of talent coming back from last year's team. So I like where we are now. I think it's helped us in recruiting, and we've really tried to spend a lot of time there. And we've gotten lucky with some guys. Uh, you know, we've worked at it, but we've also, I think recruiting is also timing and luck sometimes. So we've gotten a little bit lucky there. Um, and I like our team this year. I like who I think we can become. So I am pleased with where we are right now. You've got the program at a very high profile. You've been a high profile basketball player for a long, mm -hmm. long time. We have some videotape that we want to go to. This is from 1995. Jeff is not the coach in this footage. He's the player. <laughs> Talk us through this, coach. Well, we were down three. It's actually pretty amazing. We were down nine with about a minute left. And <laughs> we're just North hoping, Carolina, right? Yep, we're just hoping that Serge Duke Wicker Duke. missed the free throws. And when he missed it, uh, I got the ball. And I was just trying to get to a spot on the floor. And, you know, the thing that's interesting, a lot of people think we won that game with that shot. We actually lost in the second overtime. I don't correct them when they come up to me <laughs> and tell me that, uh, you know, that shot won the game. But, you know, the other thing that's crazy about that, I almost hit the same shot right before halftime. It hit the back of the rim and wow. went off, and that's something a lot of people don't realize either. But it was a great game. People oh. talk about that Duke pedigree does that mean anything do, do, do your recruits <clears throat> does that matter to recruits does it matter to parents does it matter to you some 15 years later you know it's uh you know i graduated in 97 so to a certain extent i'm still sort of relevant some of these kids still remember seeing me now that's 
passing as time <laughs> goes on. Uh, not as much here in the Midwest uh -huh. as it was when I was at VCU. I mean, all those kids there knew me. Um, but coming from Duke does have a lot of positives. I mean, a lot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm very proud of my alma mater. I'm proud of my time that I spent there. And I had an opportunity to play for one of the best ever in Coach K. Uh, but I've tried to come up with my own style. I've taken you know, bits of what I've learned during my four years there. I went back as sort of a grad assistant uh, after I finished playing. And then a lot of what I learned from my father and also my high school coach and tried to mix them all together and come up with my own style and philosophy. Mm -hmm. How's your family adjusted to life in Oklahoma? They like it. Uh, you know, it was, we've had our first child since we've been here. We have a 15 month old little girl. Um, she loves it. And she goes <laughs> crazy. She loves hearing the Boomer Sooner song, loves coming to the games. Uh, my wife loves it. My wife's an attorney. She's actually teaching at the law school here. People here are so nice, very friendly. It reminds us a little bit of North Carolina. When we first moved here, uh, one of the first people I saw when I got here was Chris Paul. The Hornets were still here, and I, I've known Chris forever. He's from North Carolina like myself. Mm -hmm. And I saw him and his mom, and uh, that's what they said. It, it reminds you a little bit of North Carolina, with just how friendly the people are. Uh, it's laid back, which is right up my alley. <laughs> huh. um, and, and, and so we love it here. You've accomplished a lot of things already. You're still a relatively young man, but uh, what, looking back, would you say is the person in your life that's been uh, most significant in your development? Well, it, it's probably my father. Um, you know, my dad has been my hero my whole life, and fortunately for me, I've had a hero that I could touch, that I could talk to, you know, whenever I wanted to. Um, and so it's my dad, uh, just the lessons that he, you know, he taught. My dad's a coach. My dad coaches in the NBA now. He was a high, my dad has coached kind of on every level. He started out as a JV high school coach, varsity high school coach, division one assistant, division two head coach, division one head coach, coached in the NBA developmental league as a head coach and now assistant in the NBA. Uh, but just you know the kind of man that he is. He and my mom just celebrated their 35th wedding anniversary. Uh, I mean, so just, I mean, he's been my guy. He's been my hero my whole life, and uh, so he's had the most significance mm -hmm. on me. Basketball is evolving. Where is college basketball here in the in the fall of 2008? Where is it come and where is it going? Well, it's going to be exciting once again. Uh, you have some really good teams coming back, some very good talent uh, returning and coming into college basketball with this freshman class. Certainly the freshman class is not as good as last year's freshman class. Uh, but it's still some really talented guys. Um, and once again, I think it's going to be a very, very exciting year. I think the Big 12 uh, is, 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 is going to be uh, up for grabs. I think there are about four teams that you can look at and say maybe these four are a little bit ahead of everyone right now on paper. But the great thing about our sport is that that doesn't really do anything. On any mm -hmm. given night, anybody can beat anyone. And I know it's sort of a cliche, but it is very true. They've talked about moving the three-point line. How do you come yeah. down on that opinion? You know what? They've moved it. I don't think it's that big of a difference now. You know, you're talking about when I played, I, I, I never shot from the three-point line. I shot from way behind <laughs> it anyway. Um, I don't think it's that big of a difference. And so I think the only thing you may see, you may see some bigger guys not take that shot as much because it is, you know, a few inches out. Uh, but I, I don't think it's that big of a difference, to be honest with you. The uh, upcoming season you've alluded to just briefly, um, <clears throat> would your style of play that you've used the last couple of years, which has been quite effective for mm -hmm. you, would you, will you retain that or will your personnel uh, dictate a change? Yeah. It should change. You know, we're looking at it going in that it's going to change now. In what respect? Hopefully we can play faster. Hopefully we haven't had much depth since I've been here. And on paper, it looks like we have that now. If these guys that we signed are as good as we think they are, then we should have that. We should be a lot more athletic than we've been since I've been here. We'll be bigger than we've been since I've been here. And if you look last year, we had three guys, you know, really three post guys. You had Taylor Griffin, Blake Griffin, and uh, Longar Longar. That was really it once we got into conference play. Uh, you know, we. 
we'll have six guys this year in the post so we can constantly throw bodies at people. Uh, our athleticism improves greatly. You know, we have six new guys this year. Wow. You know, and so we should be able to really get after teams and hopefully mm -hmm. our depth mm -hmm. can become a significant factor in how we play. A lot of attention goes to, to, to Blake Griffin. Yeah. What do you do as a coach to try and make him get in positions where he can, he can exceed and he can excel? Well, when you have a special talent like him, uh, guys like that sort of figure it out. You know, they, they don't need much. Okay, we, this is the position you need to get. You know, Blake can have such a huge impact just by rebounding the basketball. Uh, he's relentless in that way. But the thing we want to do with Blake to expand his game, and it's something we talked to him about at the end of last season when the season was over with, and I know he's worked on it this summer, is expanding his game away from the basket, being able to shoot the ball out to the old college three. Uh, obviously, he can handle the basketball. He can really pass it. Um, showing more moves with your back to the basket, uh, you know, being more creative in that way. He can do them but it's just where he's comfortable doing them in games and not just relying on brute strength. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to be even better than he was last year, and he was tremendous last year. But I think he's going to have a magnificent season for us this year. Has he benefited from being a coach's son? And as a coach's son yourself, yeah. perhaps you can relate to Well, I think he has. Yeah, I definitely think he has. His father is a great coach. Not a good coach, a great coach. And he really instilled things that I think, yeah, I've always felt basketball can be a metaphor for life if you mm -hmm. teach it that way. And you learn about responsibility. You know, you learn about teamwork. There's nothing in our lives that doesn't rely on teamwork. You know, your right. personal life, a marriage, having a family, you know, things like that. Blake is really lucky and Taylor is also not just having their father as a coach, but the kind of man that he is and the kind of values that he instilled in them that, that Mr. Griffin and Mrs. Griffin instilled in Blake and in Taylor. And so as good a basketball player as Blake is, as talented as both he and Taylor are, they're a hundred times more talented as people. I mean, they are tremendous, tremendous yeah. kids. And I think one of the things we're fortunate is that we have those kind of kids in our program. We have really good kids, I think, um, and, 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 and guys that I think that, you know, people just would love to be around. Let me get us to our first break. We're talking to Jeff Capel, and Tommy Griffin is the coach of, of uh, father of Blake Griffin yep. and that, uh, that you were referring to. Yep. Won uh, head coaches, won, won state championships as a high school basketball coach in the decade of the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and in this decade. Four different decades. Incredible. He won state titles. More with Coach Capel after this on The Verdict. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and today's guest, Jeff Capel. Let's uh, go over some of the players that we'll be getting used to this year and following the Sooners. Well, I've talked about the Griffin brothers, uh, so I'll move on. Austin Johnson will be back, and uh, he's been an off-and-on starter for the past three years. And 
if he can stay healthy, we think he can have a really, really good senior year. Omar Leary will be a senior for let us. Let me ask you, let me interrupt and ask you about Austin Johnson. Where do you see him? Is he, uh, is he a, a one or a two? Well, I think he's a combo guard. I think he can play both. Uh, obviously, he's played point for us right. the past couple of years, and I think he's done a good job. I mean, last year, as a point guard, he led us to 23 wins to a top four finish in the Big he was 12. He always and, hitting the big yeah. shot, it seemed. And, and the thing was, was that when he played well, we were tough to beat. And I don't mean to put pressure on him, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that was just the way it was. Tony Crocker, I think, is poised to have a really big year for us. He'll be a junior. Um, shot about 44% from three-point line last year. And we just think that with work, and he's put on about 10 pounds, 10, 12 pounds this summer, we think he's poised to have a really big year for us. Uh, Kay Davis had some starts mm -hmm. for us last year and down the stretch was starting and played well, shooting the basketball. He'll be back for us. And then we have some really exciting new guys. Uh, Willie Warren was one of the top 10 players in the country in high school. A really, really exciting guard, dynamic guard. Uh, just kind of a good guard. I don't really know what position, but athletic, strong, um, can shoot it, I and mean, can really, really score. Ray Willis is another freshman we're excited about. Six foot six kid from Atlanta, uh, wing player, but just really good off the bounce. Juan Patillo, Kyle Cannon, and Orlando Allen, three junior college guys, six seven, six eight, seven feet, those three guys. And so and we just feel like we've added a lot. Ryan Wright, who set out for us last year, 6'9", 240 pounds, transferred from UCLA, really athletic, really strong. Uh, so we feel like we've added a lot of pieces. Now it's just a matter of bringing it all together and forming one cohesive unit. Let me, uh, most people that watch this show or most people that play, pay any attention to OU basketball would know that Jeff Capel's the head coach. Mm -hmm. But tell us about your staff. Tell us uh, on whom do you rely to do <clears throat> the other things that you don't sure. do. Well, Mark Klein has been with me uh, since VCU. Mark is really a part of my family. Uh, Mark was my dad's assistant for 10 years, uh, went to Virginia Tech for four years, and then I hired him back at VCU and brought him here. He's the only guy I brought with VCU with me. Mark is primarily responsible for coaching our big guys, and he's done a tremendous job here at VCU, really everywhere he's been, really great recruiter. Uh, Mark is tremendous. I hope to keep him for a while, but I also hope that he gets a head coaching job. Yeah. He deserves it. Aronde Talaferro uh, is the newest member of our staff. Last year was his first year. Aronde was a high school head coach in Detroit for five years, was an assistant at Kent State with Stan Heath, and then for five years at Arkansas. Really, really dynamic recruiter. Ben Betts uh, was with me one year at VCU, then he left to be the head coach at South Carolina State, and he's been with me since I came here to uh, Oklahoma. Ben is one of the most professional people I've ever met. Great coach, great recruiter, great communicator. So I feel very lucky. That's my coaching staff. And then Brian Goodman's my operations guy who does kind of the day-to-day -day stuff. He was an assistant at Bucknell for a while. I actually grew up here in Oklahoma. Dion Phelps uh, you know, was a guy that was an assistant at Texas San Antonio. He's my video guy. Then our strength coach, Darby Rich. The one thing that's really unique about our staff is that we all played. We all okay. played college basketball. And so we know what it's like to be a successful student athlete. And that's one of the things I think that we have an advantage because we can share, we've walked in these guys' shoes. You know, we've been recruited. You know, we've had to balance academics and athletics and trying to be the best at both. And that's something we feel like we can really mm -hmm. share with our guys. Talk about the Big 12 South this year and, yeah. the, and the level of, uh, of competency that's going to be there. Well, I think traditionally the Big 12 South has been the tougher side, and this year I don't think there's any difference. I think Texas is going to be tremendous. I know a lot of people may not pick them to be as good with the loss of D.J. Augustine, but you know, if you think about it, the year before they lost a guy named Durant and <laughs> came back and they were better, and they have some really good guys returning. I think Baylor really has a chance. You know, They were very good last year, and I think they returned their whole team, and they're a year older. Uh, you know, so I look for them to be really good as well. I think Texas A&M, they lost some guys, but they have some good guys returning. They signed a good class. Oklahoma State with a new coach, but they have some really good players returning, especially on the perimeter. And I think that style will be very conducive to them. Um, you know, we feel like we'll be right there in the mix. And then Texas Tech with the motion offense, the tough defense that Pat's going to run, uh, you know, replacing his dad. Uh, and they have some good guys coming back. They were awfully young last year, and they're you know, a little bit older. So I think it's going to be very competitive once again. 
How's the recruiting process evolving? What are the what's the, the latest in, in in recruiting techniques and rule <laughs> changes and 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 we're, we're, coaches seem like they're always trying to get one step ahead of each other. Well, you're trying to. Yeah, you're what, trying what? to stay ahead of the game. You're trying to, you know, if you can get guys early and make good sound decisions like on right out of the early. second grade would probably be good. <laughs> Some people will do that now. Some people offer kids that early. Um, but you know, it's it's. Recruiting is the lifeblood of any program, and you have to be successful in recruiting. Some people get caught up in rankings. I really don't. Uh, you know, I think if you can take the top 10 guys, and usually the top 10, top 20 guys, there is a separation. But I've always felt after the top 20, top 25 guys, everything else is just kind of a wash. You know, I felt like we did a very good job of recruiting at VCU, and we recruited guys that were a little bit above our level. Um, and my experience there of getting guys and then developing talent, I think has really helped us as a staff on taking some guys that maybe aren't ranked as high as some other mm -hmm. guys, but we feel like down the road will be really good they're players. They're upside. I think they're, they're upside. Yeah. That's the one thing I try to look for when we recruit is obviously the first thing that attracts you is talent, but the one thing I try to look for is upside because I think, you know, with the way college basketball is going now, your elite guys, they aren't going to be in school that long. So I think it's really important to be able to get some guys that you know are going to be three, four-year players, and they can develop into really good players. Maybe they're not elite when they come in, but by the time they're a junior or senior, they become elite players, and then I think that's what takes your program to different levels. We talked a little bit about three-point line, but are there any other rule changes that you think are significant that will affect the game? Not really. I mean, that's it. Just the three-point line is really the only thing. Uh, there's some things I'd like to see them change. I'd like to put, uh, I'd love to see them put a circle like they do in the NBA with a block charge. Yeah. I'd love to see them do that to the college game. Um, honestly, I'd love to see them shorten the shot clock. It's at 35 now. I'd love to see them get it to 30 uh, to speed the game up a little bit more, but I don't know if those things are ever going to happen. <laughs> What do you see developing in the in the high school game? Uh, it, what what changes are taking place there? Well, the internet has changed everything on every level. Now you have high school players playing on national TV. Mm -hmm. You have high school games on national TV, and so because of that, you have players wanting to leave and transfer to schools and join with other really good players so they can get on national TV. Um, that's a huge thing now. Obviously, I think the players are getting bigger and stronger and more athletic each year. Uh, but the biggest trend I've seen is just the exposure, you know, the rankings. These kids are so into where they're ranked. And, and, and you have all these different camps and AAU tournaments. And these kids really never get a break. And I mm -hmm. think in, in some ways it's good from the standpoint of you get yourself out there, you're playing against better competition. And for us, we get a chance to evaluate but I'm really concerned about it. I'm really concerned about the kids' well-being, their health, getting hurt, or them getting burned out from playing. Um, we have not talked about the Big 12 basketball tournament coming back to Oklahoma yeah. City this March. I assume that's, that's, that's good for, for people that are living in this state. No question. Uh, I mean, I think it's a, it's a very exciting time for basketball in our state, obviously with the pro team coming here. We have an NBA team, the only major professional sports team in the state of Oklahoma is basketball. And now, you know, our state, we have a team that we can take ownership in. It wasn't like a few years ago when the Hornets were here where we were kind of leasing them for a couple of years. <laughs> right. You know, this is something we can take ownership in. Mm -hmm. We think we have a chance to be a really good basketball team this year, and I know there's a lot of excitement. You have the Big 12 tournament, so you're going to have a collection of talent uh, coming here and playing right here in Oklahoma City. So I think it's a very, very exciting time uh, for a basketball person here in the state of Oklahoma, and hopefully with all these different things, it can create so much more interest in all the sports teams. This state is really lucky. I don't think, I don't know how much people realize it. Coming from North Carolina, a basketball state, that's all anyone cares about. But you look at the success that Oklahoma has had, OU mm -hmm. has had on the basketball, ESPN just did a, a ranking of the top 30 programs since the NCAA field expanded to 64, and OU was ranked 12. Wow. Hmm. It's the second highest rated uh, team in the Big 12 behind Kansas, and there are only two ACC teams, Duke and North Carolina. Huh. And so if you look at that, the success, you look at the success that Tulsa has had on the basketball floor, 
You look at the success that Oklahoma State has had. It's been some great, or Roberts, you look at their success. It's been right. some great basketball. Oklahoma City University Division II, the success they've had. I mean, it's been some really good basketball here. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just really hope people appreciate it. I know they do. I know they appreciate you. Well, thank you. Program's in good hands. Jeff, thanks and good luck thanks this year. Appreciate thanks it. for coming. Thank you. Kent and I will have a final word after this. naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Well, the program is in good hands down in Norman. Indeed. Jeff Capel is quite an impressive uh, fellow, great credentials and great leadership. Uh, more information on the OU Athletics programs at their website, Soonersports.com. More information about this show on our website, TheVerdict.tv. We'll see you next week on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.